Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, just catching up on the last couple of weeks here. Uh, it's always interesting to go back and look at the videos that uh, took place in between the last video and this one, because it feels like I haven't made much progress, but gosh, putting the luggage door in sure was a long time ago. Um, so yeah, I'm just working on getting the luggage door. I kind of was nervous about this part because it's sort of a moving part and needs to line up just perfectly. and um, you know, there's there's a, a space it needs to go into to make it perfect. And um, it actually went together a lot easier than I expected it to. Um, you know, as usual, you just kind of follow the instructions. Um, this particular piece there needs a bend right where the line goes through it. And they recommend, it's a pretty thick piece of metal or, or you know, aluminum. And they say, just put it over your knee and bend it at that line. And uh, it's... You know, I kind of bent it a little bit and it wasn't quite enough and I bent a little more and then it was just right and it seats in there very nicely at this point in time. Uh, all the structural support around that door uh, is kind of a layered sandwich of uh, different uh, parts to create the structure around the door and um, you know I just kind of had to fiddle with it a little bit and get all the parts in the right direction and uh, once it all went together it was match drill the holes at the bottom uh, get the hinge attached and uh, it, it's I'm, I'm very happy with how it looks at this point in time. Now the next step here, uh, those air red arrows show the vertical pieces uh, where the skin on the side of the, um, uh, the plane there is going to attach to, and they get attached to the, um, the, the landing gear channel that uh, uh, runs you know just, just behind where the spar is at. And uh, you can see me fitting those black pieces into place because those are parts to hold on to the main landing gear itself. And uh, then the, the, the parts that are standing up the, are going to be attached to where the skin is at. So they help form sort of the, effectively the boat. Um, and the jigs there, the, the jigs are pretty cool. Um, the, the, one of the smart things that Sling has done, and I don't know what other manufacturers do, but um, each progressive uh, uh, jig has a number of holes actually in the jig. So the one at the first or front of the airplane is going to have one hole and then two and then three and so on until you get to six, which is actually going to attach to the rear fuselage, which is off to the right of the, the frame here. And um, so you can't really put them in the correct order. Oh, and of course, that's so what I'm doing here. Um, if anything's worth doing, uh, it's worth doing twice, so uh, it's kind of my motto. Um, I managed to get these uh, uh, parts put on uh, on the opposite side. Um, you know, they're they're a mirror of one another, so they do fit opposite one another. But when I went to go look at the how flush they were on the sides, they weren't. There was probably about a quarter of an inch difference between each one along the long long portion of the the wing. So. Stainless steel rivets uh, took me a better part of an evening to very, very carefully remove them from the existing system to not damage anything else and then flip it over and put it back in. So um, and it happens once in a while. I mean, I can look at the drawing all night long and still manage to do it wrong. But um, so what I'm working on here is uh, the rest of the uh, ribs for the rear portion of the the main core portion of the fuselage and uh, just doing some dry fitting here because uh, I don't think I had actually cleaned or deburred them yet um, and actually I'm going to skip even showing those parts of the video going forward because by now if everybody's been watching uh, they've probably seen plenty of me uh, removing plastic and uh, or the protective layer and then deburring and, and cleaning the ribs or the the, the material so um, got all that done, went through and just got it all riveted in, and um, that's all together now. Um, th th this part was pretty simple. Uh, it's just a matter of getting the ribs in the correct order because there, there is a layout to it, and there's uh, some pieces that will be um, inserted in as we go along. So uh, clean up the workspace a little bit, um, ponder the next steps, and um, the next thing to do was to start getting out the parts for the skin and structural support that actually goes below uh, for the main or the bottom floor here. Um, it, basically every phase that you go through there's going to be these pages where there's a, a long list of uh, items that are going to be part of the next series of the build 
and you know we go through and or I, I've been going through and I make sure that I have all the parts accounted for before I even start into it uh, that way they're all present in in the immediate area to to work with um, so yeah that's that's what's going on here and um, it, it's a little bit of an Easter egg hunt which is <laughs> kind of an interesting process because there are parts they do a really good job of keeping most everything together, but because I've moved items around from uh, over my father-in-law's house over to the the, the house I'm in now, um, they you know some things have gotten moved around separately. Um, there's a large a number of rib nuts that go into the the supporting structure for the the floor here, and um, one thing that I first started or learned when I first started doing this process was that these rib nuts it's really good to use some type of epoxy or um, it, something to keep the rib nuts from spinning when it's in the the, the channel and um, Evan Byrne actually had a really good video I, I, I've been going back and reviewing some of his old videos uh, even before he did the sling videos and he had a really neat uh, test that he set up where he did a rib nut with no uh, it, it, no glue or adhesive all the way up through um, epoxy and the epoxy had a torque value of like 45 or 47 or something like that on the rib nut whereas no epoxy just a straight rib nut had like a two pound torque on the rib nut itself so um, you know I definitely want to be able to make sure that that stuff uh, is able to hold well um, here I'm going through and just putting the sound insulation in um, on the in between the ribs uh, this section actually was pretty simple because you know you just basically line it up and cut it to the size that the, the opening is at and one thing about this material that uh, it was very interesting is when it sticks it is stuck it is not moving so you have to be really super careful to get it perfect when you set it down uh, or just accept the uh, the the sloppers float around um, here I'm opening up the hole for the transponder antenna. Um, that piece goes uh, pretty much directly. Well, that that the top skin opens up to the bottom skin, and uh, as per the instructions, it's just opened up that hole a little bit better to allow for that transponder to be able to be attached. Once, because it's a sandwich, the the top skin and the bottom skin. Uh, once you rivet them together, there's there's no way to really get in there. And um, then they also, uh, it was also recommended to do uh, some additional uh, sound proofing or the insulation that you've got here on the top skin to just sort of double layer up and it helps with the quietness of the airplane. Um, because I did, in, I did do, or applied this material in the rear portion of the fuselage. Uh, I think I've got some videos of that. Um, it was planned on that I would run out because they only provide enough of this insulation with the kit for the the main fuselage so what that roll that's there that i'm cutting is uh, some additional new material that i've got over at aircraft spruce and i find it's actually a much higher quality um, if i had to do it again i probably would not use the sound insulation that comes with the kit and only just buy uh, the roll as it is from aircraft spruce um, they do have different thicknesses and this is just more of me applying the epoxy to the rib nuts as i go through the only downside to this is uh, it is a little messy and I do find that it, uh, you know, if you're working, even if you're working quickly, you can get to a point where the, the epoxy does stick a little bit to the actual tool for pulling the rib nut. Um, so I've been more careful about making sure that that's super clean when I put it away because it does kind of hang around. Um, so these are just the vertical pieces uh, for the center console and the uh, the tall one there is for the instrument panel to attach to. My father-in-law came over and helped an evening and he's been super helpful when he does come over and help and uh, helps. He's enjoying the process and been very fascinated by it so it's great to have him around. Um, so we've got all the, the, the bottom floor section done and it's time to kind of do a first fit to see how that part's going to attach to the main spar. Uh, that's what this section is here. Um, it's a little, I mean, you can't put the, the, the Clecos in to hold it in place when it's sitting on the bench like that, so I find it's easier to just stand it up on its side. Um, I didn't have any foam uh, that was recommended as part of uh, just some material to help support the build for this section. I did ultimately go to the, the, uh, the hardware store and bought a sheet, so you'll see that up here, here shortly. 
But, you know, like anything that I do, it's like I try to put it together, take a look at it, make sure that it all fits, make sure that, you know, everything's lined up. And I did find a couple things that I needed to adjust, but this section here is for the rudder pedals. Um, they have their own little tray and everything. This actually went together pretty straightforward, um, but much like the, the, the center posts for the, uh, on the landing gear, uh, I managed to be able to reverse the pedals. So, uh, and I discovered it after I had riveted everything. So it was just a, another evening of going through and, uh, getting it just right. Um, yeah, I just, I have a habit of being able to look at something all day long and think it's right. And still it's not quite right. So, um, but you discover it later on and I'll, I'll just go back and fix it right here. I'm working on getting the stops for the rudder pedals fixed or, or set in place. You have to shave about 10 millimeters off of the uh, panel to, or the, the stops to make sure that they clear. And that just took a little while. Uh, so you can see I got the foam set up and my wife Lori is out helping getting the, um, the setup on the side again because I needed some uh, anti-corrosion material for the stainless steel rib nuts to rivet the bottom skin onto the main spar and that had come in just the day before. Uh, this this video this portion of the video was recorded so um, this way I could proceed with this step and I, I had a good evening planned of work um, so we got all that together it fit really well um, the the rivets held up or lined up perfectly so we didn't have too many problems there um, a lifelong friend of mine Jeff came by and he was helping that evening as well um, I was thinking we'd probably known each other probably 40 years at this time um, so, you know, and he's been pretty fascinated by the process and got him involved with pulling some of the rivets here. Um, which it's, it's interesting. Most people are kind of very apprehensive about doing it and it's literally sliding on the shaft and pulling the trigger. It's not terribly difficult. So, um, you know, he kind of got the hang of it and he actually worked in the air force for a period of time doing maintenance, uh, or managing people doing maintenance on the airplane. So, this is not unfamiliar territory for him, but I don't think he spent much time working on that, that part of things. So uh, got the bottom skin in and uh, it's time to start working on the control tubes or the, the torque tubes for all of the controls. Um, you know, the, the rudder pedals there at the, on the far left of the screen here went together totally smooth. I mean, I, I didn't have to really do anything to make sure that they f were smooth it's they they're they're perfect this on the other hand is definitely a challenge um you know the the idea behind this is that there's uh some um i'm going to call them cleats that basically hold the lower tube and the upper tube in place and there's these bushings that they go through and if you just set them in there they don't move too bad um and if you go watch the the youtube videos for the sling build for the section um you want them really smooth because you know the you're going to hand be hand flying or under the autopilot's going to be flying it and any any resistance in there is going to be something that you have to push against and the more you have of it uh the more it could get just amplified so you set it in place you check the tor uh, check to see if it's nice and smooth and it's not bad when it's completely not uh clicked into place but the moment you put these cleats into place um it it starts binding. So you shave a little bit of the metal off, uh, to give it, uh, so it's not under such great pressure. And I found one, one of the, the, the cleats that just, I'm, I'm to the point now where it's like, I don't really want to trim too much more off of it. Cause it seems like I'm now excessive in that area. And, um, so I, it, it's very time consuming because you t put it together, you test it, it doesn't work, take it apart, clean a few things up, put it back together. And you know, you can't access, everything from one side so there's a lot of walking around back and forth um and then lots of sort of guesswork as to what's going on um i haven't worked on it in a couple of days so uh, this weekend's plan is to to really get out there and get after it um but once i get that part done then i'm on to attaching this to the rear fuselage and um hopefully the next video you'll see a full uh set of fuselage from the tail all the way up to the firewall Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time.